from them, get to know some of the stuff that they've been through. It's just incredible. You know, I, I thought I'd been through some, you know, rough things, you know, having four dads by the time I was 16 and, and just the drug world and all the different things just before I was 16. But what they've been through is just, just unbelievable. So pour into our teens. Pray for our teens. They're just amazing, amazing bunch of people. And we're going to raise them up. So we're going to start doing on the 7th, um, Sunday night at 5 o'clock. On Sundays, we're going to do our youth service, so it's about the youth, so parents don't show up because um, we want them to have a little bit of freedom, not being um, in a good way lorded over by you, but we want to um, be able to let them have freedom just to be who they are and develop who they are becoming because they're going to change some lives in the city, and we need them. We need them to, to do this thing, so thank you guys for being so good. I want to share one quick testimony um, you know that hundred dollar I always keep in my wallet, and literally I prayed for. I literally have prayed for a wallet that would give me a hundred dollar bill every time I pulled a hundred dollar bill out. And I've got a wallet. I won't let you have it, but I have a wallet that um, when I pull a hundred dollar bill out of it to give to somebody, it's not for me. It's for someone else. It's not for bills or anything else. It's for somebody. And when I pull that hundred dollar bill out and I give it to somebody, somebody always comes up to me and says, "Here, I feel like the Lord wanted me to give you this." I've literally gotten a hundred dollar bill back every time I've taken a hundred dollar and put it out um, from somebody, and, they, and so that's incredible. I mean, if you guys want to have, um, they sell them. They sell them on Marketplace. No, uh, no, they don't sell them on Marketplace, but they are um, cool. So, um, so we can pray that same way because God will do the same thing for you. I, I do believe He will. But we were at the restaurant, and what happened was um, there was a young lady there. I felt like I need to give that hundred dollar bill to. And so as I was praying, you know, the teens, I got to explain to them why we do this, because we want to honor people, no matter what's going on, no matter how good the service is or how bad the service is that they give us, we want to honor people. Yeah, I took that row out for a reason. Um, and, uh, and so we just want to honor people in and out of the season that they're in. And I knew this girl needed some, needed some financial help, so... Um, I got to explain to the teens about that and how to love on people and how we want to create a culture of honor in, in, in our teens. And so when we gave that, when I got to go up and give that um, $100 bill to that lady, um, and, and Matt paid for our lunch today. Thank you, Matt. And some of the teens come out of the restroom, and as I'm handing the $100 bill, the girl's crying. I mean, she's instantly crying at the waitress. And then some of the other waitresses start crying, and the, the teens are over there. Asking Shelly, oh, what's she crying for? Something like that. I don't know my drawing title. But it's because of the blessing. You really don't believe what a blessing can be just by you going up, not a hundred dollar bill, just you going up to someone and say, you're amazing. God loves you so much. And when they hear that, it brings that to their mind, who, that God does love them. They are a great people. So without further ado, we're going to have Tammy, Kim, Chambers, and Shelly come up, and we're going to talk a little bit to you guys about life of love, what we're doing, where we're going, and answer any questions that you might have. So if you have a question, um, we're going to answer those questions for you about this ministry, and we're going to give you a little insight on what we're doing, because some of you have had some questions about, you got it, Sozo ministry and different things, so... can't. Hello? You're on now. Now I'm on. Woohoo. <laughs> now I'm on. <laughs> That's good stuff. And I want you guys to know that we're up here and you're down there, like just a little, you're a little bit further down, but we're not any greater than you are. No. Just want you to know that right off the That's bat. Right. We're all You're equal. Awesome. We just have mics and you don't. And that's the only difference between us. So but we're going to give you an opportunity. Yeah, we're going to give you an opportunity. So We will. So anyhow, some of you... <laughs> who's talking? He thought I was going to continue to talk. Isn't he gracious? This is I your just leadership, love that about guys. Him. We get two more out there. So we've been Wednesday nights talking about Sozo. Inner, it's an inner healing. It's so, so you look up the word so, so it's an inner healing ministry. And some of you are not sure what that means or what that is. Listen, some of us are walking around with such a deep hurt in our lives that we can't get past it. 
and we feel like we come to the middle of the week and we can't get out of this funk that we're in. And I want you to know, because you come Sunday and you fill up and then you feel like during the week you, you just empty out. What that is, is if you look at some of my dad's bowls around here, pick them up and just look at them. Some of them have holes in the bottom of them in different places. And if you have something in your life, if you have something in your life, well, this is pretty bad. If you have something in your, this is beautiful though, um, in your life that is, is like you, that you've left from years ago that you haven't fixed, you can fill up on Sunday and then all of a sudden you start leaking out really quick because you haven't patched that place. You haven't healed that spot. You haven't asked Jesus for healing in that place. And when Sozo talks about going deep into those places in our life where we've, we've put walls up and we've put things aside and not address certain issues. So when you have a meeting with Tammy and she's just incredible with it, you, you'll fill those little cracks up and those voids up and you'll fill them up with something good. You, you'll repair them for one and then you'll fill them up. And as you start to do that, you'll notice your full level is, is, is fuller each week as you go through the week. It's like, man, I feel pretty good today. And it's not even Sunday yet, you know, and I still feel good. You know, normally I'm drained out by Wednesday. And as you feel those things, you will be able to come to a place where you're constantly in an overflow mode, where you're flowing out to other people, constantly in an overflow. And, you know, and I'm in that mode all the time, in an overflow mode. But I did find out that I had a few cracks that, that I wasn't aware of and it wasn't leaking out bad enough to make me not overflow but it was leaking and I want to fix every spot in me that I have those issues and that's what happened I got to you know I got to be vulnerable and it's about being vulnerable and open up to people to your deepest people you trust that your deepest things um, that went on in your life or go on in your life that you can be free from and healed from so um, and Tammy you talk a little bit about that and how you probably just hit everything but no that was good um sozo is a term in the new testament that means if you see it it um let me back up excuse me salvation is translated uh, in the greek as sozo and so when we come to know jesus as our lord and savior um, a lot of times we stop there just with salvation our eternity is secure but we also know that the Lord, he, when Jesus went to the cross, he paid the price for it all. He broke every curse that we would um, have to deal with in our lives. He, he bore stripes on his back for our healing. Yeah. And our, in our healing, uh, we're also not only wounded in our physical bodies, but in our soul. And we're a three-part being. We're a body, soul, and a spirit. And our soul is made up of our mind, our will, and our emotions. And if you've walked with the Lord any time at all, you know that there are times just memories can haunt you or you can have just these emotions that might be triggered by events in your life or sounds and, and such. And so the Lord wants to bring healing to absolutely every area of your life so that you can be exactly who he's designed you to be, that you um, once again have this incredible DNA from your father and he has signs and wonders and miracles that he wants to perform through you and so anyway um, inner healing is just a necessity for us to walk in that fullness that God has for us and so I just want to encourage you um, just to take a take a scan <laughs> of kind of where you're at and are there some areas in your life that like Jason put, that you're leaking out, that you need a touch from the Lord to bring healing. And God does it. He's an amazing Lord. And um, I'm kind of losing my train of thought yeah, here. Yeah, you're good. So will you tell us a little bit about um, what we're going to step into as far as identity? You know, our theme here is L-I-F-E, love, identity, freedom, encounter. As we love on the people, this re as we love on you, you will find your identity and um, it'll bring you freedom to fully encounter everything that God has for you. But you have to walk in life. You know, we live in this life, and if we go in this order, as we love on people, and they find their identity through that, through love, because love changes everything. The agape love that we talked about changes everything. You love them, and through that love, they find freedom, break off chains, 
and then they can fully encounter God, then also they can get an encounter which will bring them freedom as well. So that last two letters can be mixed around. But um, through encounters, we get freedom, and we can get freedom and then have encounters through the freedom. So um, and then we're going to step into a, a class or I, on identity. and so. Okay, and identity, God gave each one of us unique personalities, unique characteristics about ourselves, and unique identity. Well, sometimes growing up, none of us really had perfect parents, you know, so there's woundings and things that happen in childhood that you carry with you all your life. And sometimes you do things like addictions and things like that, and you don't know why you, you do them. You don't really want to do them. But, and for example, you know, people that have a very short fuse, um, anger is based in fear. So something happened a long time ago that caused you fear, and then you use anger as a cover-up to take care of that. So what we like to do is just dig out the true identity that God gave you. Um, some of us are introverts, some of us are extroverts, and that's okay. We're, we're not supposed to be cookie cutters and look like each other. But I have had 75-year-old people that have gone through identity classes and find out who God really made them to be. Yeah. So when we walk in our true identity, then we can walk in all the gifts and callings that God has put on us. A lot of us have no idea what we're called to or what our gifts are. But when we go through identity, we start finding out what those things really are so that we can be used in the kingdom of God greater than what we ever thought possible. The other thing is when we walk in our true identity, we bring glory to God. We bring honor to him because we're being who we're really called to be. Yeah. Yeah. And through, once we experience this, guys, there's going to be a shifting in the atmosphere. You know, we're getting ready to shift right now. Um, we're, we're getting ready to tear these walls down. There's going to be an extra part of a stage over here that um, Tamara will be up on. And, uh, and there's going to be a baptism over here that's six, 15 feet by 8 feet, 55 inches high. So it's going to be a bunch of water. And we're going to change the city um, just through our stepping into what God has us doing. It's going to be remarkable. I want you guys to know we're going to see angels. We're going to see gold dust. We're going to see glory clouds. We're going to see all those things. You might not think that's real, but it's real. And I don't want to focus on those things when we see them because I don't want to take away from what Jesus is doing, even though it's going to be a miraculous thing. But that's going to become normal. Those things, what God's getting ready to do, those things are going to become normal. People just coming to the altar on their own without anything like this morning are going to become normal. We're not going to have to beg people to go to the altar. They're going to want to come. They're going to want to walk through those doors, get some freedom. You can get it at home, but they're going to set in the atmosphere and the environment, and it's going to change things. You guys might wonder why. You know, I'm a big dreamer, and you guys are big givers, and that makes my dreams be able to come true because you guys give like you do, and I thank God for that. And so you guys might think with the cameras and the different things that we have in here, um, you know, we four cameras that we have that we run and the sounds just everything the way it works I dream big and I want it to go big but I'm setting us up for greater things because God is moving us into greater things this the, you this group of people and, and many more in this region God is moving us to greater things the, you know if we attempt great things for God we can expect great things from God and so as he's moving us into this next realm don't be surprised when you see an angel. Don't, I mean, I, I mean, see him hovering in, in the air, and I, I promise you, you will. If you ask the Lord, he will show you. Um, don't be surprised about all these things that you're going to see because the unveiling is happening. He's unveiling the sin that's in our lives and unveiling the heavens that he's putting before us. And his word talks about how he comes. There's different levels of glory, and glory upon glory is how he um, demonstrates himself mighty. And I feel like um, even the last couple months, we've went from one level of glory to another. And just from his goodness, um, it's nothing about us. It's just what he's doing in the lives um, here in the people. Um, the baptismal that we're getting ready to put up, the pool, I am, that has been my heart. I used to attend Hoosier Harvest years ago, and Martha Page would call me and say, hey, you want to come to the baptisms? We didn't even know who was getting baptized. We just love. we were drawn to baptisms just I didn't even understand at that time the fullness of what baptism is or water immersion. So obviously when um, God hooked us up with Pastor Todd Smith last February, that was just a, a game changer for our ministry. And we're excited to host him again. 
And it's nothing about Todd. He loves saying it's a nameless and faceless revival because it truly is. He walks in such humility. It is really just Jesus meeting people in the water. Yeah. And many of us here have experienced it, and our lives have been radically changed because of it. And um, I love the testimony. Um, you know, some people would get in night after night, even in ours. We had it two nights in a row in June and September. And um, many of us got in it any time <laughs> we could. But, you know, not to judge that. Um, do you guys remember Todd Smith's testimony on the lady who was schizophrenic? And she went in like 90 some times. And each time she would get in the water, more layers would just uh, peel off of her. Or Jesus would just heal her in a new, new area. But I love how God's grace and mercies were over this woman that she knew enough, if I just keep getting in the water, I'll be healed. I'll be more healed. I'll be more free. And, you know, if any of us have known someone schizophrenic, that's not an easy, you know, I think the doctors just kind of throw meds at people. And, you know, they're just, we don't understand it to the fullness of even what it is. I don't, personally. You guys may know more than, than me about it. But just to know that this woman continue to get in the water because she knew what Jesus was doing in her and through her every time she got in. I kind of laughed at Todd's testimony when he'd say it would be two, three in the morning and he'd look up and there she is in line at the end of the line and he's like, ah, oh, her again? And, you know, just because he's exhausted, he'd been ministering for hours, but he soon realized what was happening. You know, she would testify to him and then he was embracing seeing her because she ended up getting to be whole and free and is not schizophrenic any longer and living a full functioning life and um, working for the kingdom of heaven, you know, bringing, bringing people in the fullness of salvation. We know there's a couple in town um, diagnosed with schizophrenia and they are walking the streets and maybe live in tents. Just think, I, I picture this woman over their lives. You know, I, I like think of her because that's hope. For the ones that we see that we may not even be able to connect with because of the frame of mind they're in. So um, it just gets me excited to know what God's doing in this region. Um, we're thrilled to be able to host another water immersion revival. Yeah. We've had at least three people come to us, all different people at different times, and say that they have seen um, lines of vehicles lined up to get in. And so we are wanting people of the region, people of our area, to come and experience the water and see Jesus, Amen. to see what he can do That's for right. them, whatever, you know, could just ask him, ask him what you need free of and, you know, be thanking him for it because he's obviously more than willing to do it. He wants us freer than we probably want ourselves. Yeah. <laughs> he's, he's more, more excited than we are to be free and, and walk in the fullness. Yeah, for sure. You guys know, um, this is not, I mean, walking as a Christian is not, we're not saying it's a gravy walk because it's not. You're going to have some battles. You're going to have some opposition. But greater is he that lives in us and he who's in the world. Remember that always. When you pray against Satan, you pray out loud. You know, I bind you, Satan, in the name of Jesus. Pray out loud those words. And I want you guys to know there's a, there's a man that's in town here that I minister to every morning. And I go down to the gas station and he's there. And there's some days he's cussing at himself and, and ranting and raving as he's drinking his coffee. And there's other days that he will, he will be open. And, I, and I, I go in in the morning and I call his name. I say, good morning. And I say his name. And he, sometimes he'll look at me with a dirty look and a mean look like he wants to beat me up. But there's other times it's a receiving look. And the other morning I went in there and I said, how are you doing today? And he said, I'm doing pretty good. I said, it's been pretty cold out. And he said, yeah. I said, you still living in a tent? You know, because I've looked up a little bit about him, and I know a little bit about him. He said, yeah, I'm still living in a tent. I said, um, I said, is there any way you can get in an apartment? Because he gets money that comes in regularly. And, um, and he said, man, there's just too many people. Too many people coming in and out, and he can't handle that. You know, and where he's at, it's a tent out in the woods, you know, and he's content with that. That's not who God called him to be, but he's content with that for right now. And sometimes we get content in our situation or our sin doesn't mean we're supposed to stay there. Okay, so, and, and it's exhausting sometimes when I try to talk to him and he's cussing and or, or and there's like three different people talking through him at the same time. Um, but I'm continuing to pray for him 
and tell him hi every time I see him. And it's going to change. One day, that's going to trigger, and he's going to realize this man loves you, and it's going to change his life. So don't give up. Keep pressing in. Keep pressing on. Keep pushing forward. Whatever you're battling, whatever you're struggling with, keep pushing forward because it's going to change. You just keep going and keep going and keep going. I used to go knock on doors and ask people to come to church, and I've had people say, I'm a Christian already, and they would, they would close the door. They wouldn't even open the door for me. But as I persistently went, and I knock on the door each week, the door come open a little further and a little further, and then they start coming to church. And that's what God's doing. We have to just keep moving forward and pressing into our lives, but also in other people's lives. Amen. Yes, um, I shared a little bit first service about the encounter, the E, <laughs> and love. And we want to just make sure that this is a place where everyone encounters yeah. God. And I love the fact that we're doing the immersion revival and the immersions because I know many of you know that Martinsville's redemptive gift is water and it's the healing water. And so none of this is coincidence. You know, I look back over the years with just the words that have been spoken out over Martinsville, this city, this righteous city, and how this is coming to fruition. You know, years ago I had organized a prayer walk and I said, Lord, what do we pray? I said, we've thrown sticks in the water to heal it. You know, we've put salt in the water. A glow has just been amazing how they've yeah. just blanketed this city with prayer. Um, Who's your harvest? We had the 25 mile radius where we did spiritual mapping and we did. We went out and prayed over the city and just calling forth, you know, the goodness of God and his redemptive gifts. And, and so anyway, as I'm asking him and just being reminded of all of these things that we've done, so I said, Lord, you know, what do we pray? And he said, pray that the fruit of your prayers will come to pass. And I thought that was so good. And so I just feel like we're, we truly are stepping into that. And I know I've, we've probably said it a million times. <laughs> we've heard it a million times, but we're stepping into this incredible time yeah. where the Lord is just going to show himself strong on your behalf, on our behalf, and we're going to see lives transformed. Yeah. We already have, yeah. you know, and I'm just so thankful to be a part of this, of what God's doing in this great spiritual awakening, not only in Martinsville, but I truly believe across our land. And uh, I was one that I know Shelly had shared a little bit about you know, just seeing people lined up, and the Lord had given me a vision of that, where there were churches that were going to be buses to this immersion revival for their people to, to get in and encounter God. And that was, uh, you know, if you've watched any of the YouTube videos of the water encounters, you know, where people got in the water and just encountered the Lord, it's amazing, and it yeah. truly has been life-changing. And I remember one lady in particular just telling me that, when she got in the water, she saw the face of God, of Jesus, and she felt his arms around her. And it was, she said she felt like she was in the water for hours. It wasn't. It was probably just a matter of 15 minutes or so. But the encounter that she had with Jesus yeah. changed her life. And so that's what we want. We want people to come in those doors and encounter him whether it be gold dust, feathers, angels, but most of all, him, you yep. know, his spirit, and just to be aware of that, to hear his voice, to feel his touch, to just be changed by him. Yeah, so it's so good. So I just want to share real quick what we're, and then we're going to ask a few questions. So we're getting ready to step into, after the Youth Center's bill, we're getting, we're getting it close. We're maybe halfway there. Um, hopefully by the end of this month, it'll be finished up. So we're going to be having the youth meet, our teens meet um, on Sunday nights at 5 o'clock and for our team meeting. And then we're going to have once a month Friday jams with our teens and, and their friends that they can come. And we'll have chaperones that will help with it but not interfere with what God's doing um, as far as their teens being here. And then we're going to step into Wednesday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday from 11 o'clock to 1 o'clock after the youth center is done, that we're going to be here for prayer time. So you can come in anytime between those, those for your lunch hour, sit and pray, 
sit in what God's doing, see what he's doing. It's going to be a no conversation type of time, but it's going to be a prayer time. So, and then, um, what else we got going there? We got three things coming up. We got the Re Water Immersion Revival. We got a prophetic conference at the end of the year. Andrew Riley will be coming. He was the one at the third trough down here praying with a beard and a hat. He had a hat one night and didn't have a hat the second night. And he's going to be here in the middle of the year. Um, so we'll get those dates out to you for when these guys are coming. It's going to be miraculous. I mean, spread the word. Tell people what's going on. Invite them. I mean, we I had to, we had to go clear to Georgia to meet an Amish guy to find out that he lives in Park County, Indiana, and that he brought twelve of his family here to get in the water. We had twelve Amish people here getting baptized, so it was just amazing, amazing time and just that. So it's incredible. I'm just going to explain good. real quick. Um, some of you are newer and may not realize um, the North Georgia revival started. Um, it'll be three years in February, and so every Sunday night. They have opened their doors, and now it's just hundreds and hundreds of people that come in on Sunday nights, and many from all over the world now. And people are experiencing Jesus in the water. And um, Pastor Todd was ready to resign from this church right before this happened. They had done a 21-day fast, and he was ready to resign. And he was praying at his, uh, on the stage, looking at the baptismal. And then Jesus spoke to him, or God did, and said, um, it, was empty. He's, it was an empty baptismal, but he saw it's full of water with fire. And he said, I'm ready to um, baptize my people with fire. And we need that to happen in the last days. Yeah. Obviously, if Jesus doesn't return for another 20 years, you know, we need to be empowered and we need to be cleansed. The word says that Jesus is coming after a bride without spot or wrinkle. And so getting in the water and meeting Jesus, it's not necessarily a baptismal or baptism experience. It can be, but um, just immersing and getting residue and, um, you know, junk from our lives or struggles, whatever it would be, you know, Jesus is just meeting the people in the water. And that's exactly what's happening. Um, his yeah. word says burn up like chaff. And that's, I feel like a lot of what's happening, you know, we just the residue and just stuff in us the strongholds that keep us from being the fullness of who we are to be in Christ um, so we just encourage everyone to be excited and um, get in the water <laughs> as much as you want to be we're not gonna we're not gonna like um, shake our heads say oh not them again <laughs> we were excited to see yeah, what God's we'll doing to the people we'll you know? stay here all night yeah we yeah I just wanted to add uh, one thing to the the immersion baptism um, there's a verse in the Bible where it talks about when Jesus was baptized. When he came up out of the water, it says that the heavens were opened unto him. And I love that. You know, that when we encounter Jesus in the water, when we come up, we truly are born again. And to think that the heavens are opened unto us. You know, that there's something powerful that takes place when you do that, when you're obedient to be either baptized or to be immersed when you come up then you've got a whole new realm that you have access to because of Jesus yeah so how many believe Jesus is coming okay he's not coming today and he's not coming tomorrow and I don't want him to come today or tomorrow there's too many people out there that need to reach you've got loved ones that need to reach so if you got your bags packed and waiting at the door put your bags under the beds and let's get down to business. You're ready to go. Get yourselves ready to meet your maker. But also get yourselves ready to go out into this lost and dying world. Right. To meet other people. Amen. To bring them to the same knowledge that you have. So they understand the same thing that you understand. The same way that you do. So we're going to go into questions. we got 10 minutes left. I want to use about. Um, I want to be able to have time to pray. And we can go over. I don't mind that. But um, So does anybody have a question for. Um, Kim Chambers here this morning. Anybody have a question for her this morning um, about identity or any other question you might have for her? Let's ask questions, guys. I mean, you know, you guys have questions, just ask them. And, um, or for, I mean, it's just for any one of us, for anyone. If you have any questions, period, that you want to... May you have a question back there? This is your, this is your body. This is your, part of your church. So you, this, you guys built this. Hey, Kim, could you talk a little bit about 
um, meeting with the pastors like you did at the nine o'clock service and how unity is among the pastors is coming? Um, I have a, a class that I meet every Friday. I meet with several pastors from different churches here and down, and they're actually going through a class. And part of the things that this class teaches is identity, and then we go into prophecy, you know, because the Bible says that everybody can prophesy. And then we go into the gifts of the Spirit. We talk about the Holy Spirit. And these are pastors from churches that are denominational churches. And do so, pardon? That don't do none of that. Yeah, they don't, they don't do any of that, any, but they're starting to. And so what I see is the Lord getting the whole area, you know, the whole body of Christ, you know, in a place where we can move and operate in everything that he's called us to do. We pray for healing. We talk a lot about it. It's a safe place for those pastors. It's a safe place. They practice prophecy. You know, but the thing is, they're going and they're starting to talk about this in their churches now. And people are really getting hungry for more of God. Yeah. They want to yeah. see God move through this whole city. And so um, just, you know, as an encouragement, it's, it's going on everywhere. But they do. They watch what's going on here, too. Jason sows into their life as well. Jason and Shelly and, and Tammy. And they're beginning to step out of their denominationalism and into what God's really called them to do. Yeah. So it's happening, and it's very encouraging to see it. Yeah, thank you, thank you. Anybody else have any questions? Come on, guys, don't be scared to ask anything. I don't care if it's Bible question, whatever. We just want to answer your questions the best that we're able to. Bob has a question. This baptismal is great that we're going to be getting in but whenever we have buses lined up here, we're gonna have to keep these things available to keep to keep the the herd moving. The herd Praise moving. the Lord. We're gonna need a lot of volunteers. We'll, we'll, be, of we'll be able to do about five or six in, at one time in the pool. It's it's a big pool. It's, yeah. It's a statement, a statement, a declaration. Yeah. Okay. Anybody else? May. I have no question, but what I want to do is thank you all. Um, I may not have been here when Jason did it, but from the bottom of our hearts, we thank you that you sowed into this immersion yes. ministry. Yes. You it's are incredible. part of that ministry because of what you've sown thank into you it. But God's going to take you. He's going to take you with him and use you in every way you will let him to yes. change lives in this region, not including Martinsville. And, yeah. I, and I'm tag teaming with Tammy in saying that Martinsville will become a destination. God told me that quite a while ago. It will become a destination, not a gateway from to go from one place to another. The people are coming here and they're coming here to meet Jesus. Yeah, that's true. It's just yeah, it's not only the pastors that are watching. There's people watching because this is what's going on. This region's been known for people starting something and not finishing it. And what God started here, he's going to continue. He's going to continue that. And they're waiting. They're sitting back and they're waiting to see if this is going to go. This is really going to stay because they don't want to invest themselves in one more thing that's not going to work. And so... What God is doing, he's, they're, and what they're doing, they're just sitting back and they're waiting to see if we're really going to do what we say we're going to do and reach out to this community. That's what we feel like we're doing, is reaching yeah. out. Anybody have any questions? Anybody else? You know, I just want to say, I'm so happy to hear this. I'm so happy to hear that this is coming about because it was really been on my heart. So I'm glad to hear this. Okay. Yeah. I want to share, I don't know if we spoke this already in this service, but 9, 9 a.m. Um, brought the fact up that what we feel like the Lord is leading is having this water immersion baptism every uh, month, one Sunday a month. And we have felt that probably since after September. Just It was strong in me, and I've spoken of it several times to leadership. I feel like that was the direction we were going. And then when this pool came up, <laughs> the idea of getting this larger pool, because it can um, obviously fit so many more people, we would, and Pastor Todd Smith has given us the blessing. He's like, hey, this is nothing about me. You guys do this as much as you feel led to. 
So we, our goal is to have this maybe one Sunday um, a month. And, you know, obviously we would need volunteers too with, with the work of it. But to be in prayer for that, you know, be praying and covering that because you're all a part of it as well. Anybody else? Anybody else have any needs? Anything they need to pray about? Need us to pray for you about? Nate has a question. Um, I don't really have a question. Just hearing everything this morning, um, God gave me a vision. He gave me two visions. I said, uh, I said it last fall, but there are a lot of people that wasn't here to hear it. Um, Everything that you're talking about with the water and the, and the fire, with the pastor and, and the bowls and stuff, um, God had me one night in a vision where I was looking down on Indiana and there was a bowl of fire and it was just burning in a bowl. And then, and then, in, and then he uh, gave me another vision where that bowl was overfilling and it was spilling out. It was going across our region. Yeah. And he took me down into that vision. It was people with torches walking away from the bowl and walking back and forth carrying torches. And wow. it's just to hear what you're talking is, I've been lost at what that vision is. And just to hear about the water and, and the bowls and stuff is kind of bringing that vision together for me. Thank That's you. That's awesome. Yeah. You know, guys, there's something about Indiana. Thank you for that. There's something about Indiana. God is doing something in Indiana, the crossroads of America. He's doing something in Indiana, I promise you that. Shelly and I, a few years back, were at a, at a conference in Florida, and the evangelist come in, and he said, there's something about, Chuck Pierce said, there's something about Florida that God's doing something in, and Indiana. He labeled us out, Indiana and Florida are the two states that God is really, really transitioning, and I don't know how that's going to look or how that's going to work, but I do know that God is really doing something here in this city and um, amongst you guys and, and, and ourselves here. So get plugged in as much as you can. If you, if you feel like there's nothing for you to do, that's a lie from the enemy. There's plenty for you to do. I mean, I can make a list of stuff for you to do. I was here last night, late last night, shoveling that whole front of this thing off. You know, so... Um, I need maintenance guys to step in and step that's up where I can't. Vanna. And uh, <laughs> that's why what? I said that's why you're Vanna. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, just so, um, so sometimes, you, sometimes you can get acknowledgement of someone else's pain when we're praying. So does anybody have a right hip? That has, that has been bothering them or hurting them even right now. Okay, is there anybody else besides Darlene that has a right hip that's hurting? Yeah, that's right. The hip's a hip. The lane, the hip's a hip, the hip. So um, if you're next to those people, because you are all powerful and you have the power to pray over them, if you're next to those people, just lean to them. And just start praying over, and if you if you can reach your arms out, reach out to them, and uh, pray for them. So we got one back here, one over here, and one here. Anybody else um, have that pain? So we're gonna see what God's gonna do right now, cause it's gonna go away. Okay, we're gonna. Yeah, go ahead. It, it's not a question. I just felt like saying that you talking about your dreams and stuff. Uh, dreaming is what we want work is how we get it yeah that's right that's absolutely right absolutely right so as we're going to just we're just going to pray real quick for these these different um people and we're just going to watch god move right now we're going to we're going to learn how to work out of power and not just our words so god's going to bring healing right now we believe it we trust in him it's already been paid for so don't ask him to heal thank him for what he's already done continue to thank him for what he's already done it's already been paid for Thank you, Father, right now for healing in these three. Anyone else that didn't stand up? Thank you, God, for healing right now. You know everything that's working in this body. Father, you know the needs of everyone. Other than this pain, Lord, there's other things that people are dealing with. I ask that 
you just manifest that healing that's been paid for on Calvary in their lives and their bodies, Lord. We glorify you. We trust you. We thank you, Jesus. You're so good. You're so good, God. We believe in you for the power, for the more, that we can operate out of a power, of a power and not just words. Yeah. Yeah, so so right so right over here, where are you at right now with your right here, where are you at now with your pain? Tracy, what's your pain level right now? What's your pain level? It feels better. Awesome. Elaine, what's your pain level right now? Zero. Yeah, come on. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Pray for her again. Let's let's lean into it. Just one more time, guys, pray for her because I want it to be gone. Guys, Tammy, one more time. Let's pray for her one more time. I want it to be gone. No, it's gone. It's gone. All the way? All the way? Awesome. Thank you, Jesus. It's gone back here, right here. Jesus. Thank you, Father, right now for Darlene. Thank you, Lord. How's your pain, Darlene? About a two. Let's take it to a zero. Let's take it down to a zero. We don't operate out of twos. Thank you, Father, once again for what you're doing. The price that was paid on Calvary, Lord, so precious. Thank you for power, Lord, that we can walk in power. You have every ability to walk in every bit of power that heaven has. Don't downplay yourself. Don't downplay what God's given you. Don't downplay it. You have an authority to walk in a complete power. You think them comic people are great, them Marvel people are great. The power that God can give us is way greater than that. Way greater than that. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. The superhero, Jesus. Thank you, Father, right now. for miracles, Father. else have anything that needed prayed for this morning? Jada? Nothing? I saw you doing this. Uh, oh, okay. Anybody else have anything? Doing all right now? You good? Sit in it. Sit in it. Yeah. Anybody else? Before we go, anybody else need prayer for anything? Do we have anybody here that's just not saved? We never asked that. Just assume that everybody is. It's okay if you're not. You've never been saved before. You've never been saved before. Come on. Oh, you have something you want to... Your grandbaby? Yeah. Yeah, they're just saying stuff. Yeah, don't believe any diagnosis. Bring it from heaven. Just pray for this situation about this young baby getting ready to be born. I have a granddaughter getting ready to be born too excited you guys have anything right here 
front row or teens right here? Anything? You guys good? Relationship good? Jesus? Is there anybody not saved? I got saved a bunch of times. I feel like I did. I got saved once, but I felt like I asked a bunch of times. Walked in at once. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus, right now for the outcome that you have from heaven. Thank you that we don't have to believe the doctors. We believe you, Jesus, truth. you guys to know there's there's a few people that are um we'll close with this there's a few people that are out in the in the, in the highways and byways i mean they're they're living in tents you guys ever been down to the bridge or underneath the bridge see how some of these people are living i want you to know they're happy with the way they're living they think that they are but let's pray into that because we need to we need to get some of these people off the streets into a into a real house, a real life, a real relationship with Jesus because, you know, um, and I'm going to be honest with you, um, I have a low tolerance for um, ignorance and I have a low tolerance for um, people who have been given over-the-top opportunity and they throw it down. I mean, I just, I don't have time for people like that. But there's one individual that I... See, this is where the Lord is changing me. There's one individual that I said, I'm not going to give him time of day because of how he's treated other people, how he's turned down every good thing that's been given to him, you know, and I just, I don't want to waste my time on people that don't want what God has for them. And so I'm going to start ministering to this young man and help to bring him out of the situation that he's in and you know and forgive me if my heart has been negative toward toward this situation I don't want to ever be negative I don't want to ever turn anybody away because the love of Jesus never did and I don't want to be that way either um, you know just as a human being I don't understand people sometimes why they would throw a perfectly great opportunity away and just throw it in the trash but people do and I don't want to give up on them just because they do uh, what I am saying is I want to make time for this guy. What I'm, what I'm not saying is that you have to make time for everyone that, that is, is not doing this. But find the time that you have that, for the people that God's called to you. And uh, for me, I feel like this gentleman is, is one of these. I, ha I have to step out and make time for him. So uh, thank you guys for being here today. Thank you for your hearts. Teens, keep inviting other teens. Remember the 7th, we're going to meet Sunday night. We're going to start planning our next trip we're going to take. Um, it might be in the community next time just to work on somebody's house um, or just, um, just go minister to some people. Um, you guys have this. You guys are great. You guys are a remarkable bunch of young people. And God's going to build this thing, and it's going to just, it's going to be, it's going to be over, the, it's going to be remarkable. It's going to be something the city's never seen. It really is going to be something the city's never seen. Huh? It's what? Seven. Who watches the people that kneel down for the, for the flag? I haven't watched it for a long time now, and I, I was, I'm, a, I'm, a super, I'm a football fanatic, but I've laid it down just for a season. Um, so the 7th is Super Bowl Sunday. I'm still going to have youth service, so um, if you can make it, you can make it. Maybe we'll have updates on the game, or, or maybe even uh, we're not allowed to watch it here. I don't want to pay for that kind of licensing, but um, yeah, we'll, we'll have fun. Maybe we can throw a football back and forth. I don't know. Listen, guys, 
and I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. This is me. Do you think that the enemy would not use sports in our children's lives to distract from what God has for them? They're at a young, teachable age, and yet we're running our rag, running ourselves ragged, taking them from to and fro to get them to this thing and that thing and spending all that money that's God's money on something that, you know, I'm, if someone's going to be a super, you know, NFL superstar, and you, God showed you that, pour into them. But man, I mean, we're, we're, we're getting our kids caught up in something every week. I mean, and, you know, we talked to Jada, you know, they got, they got schedules, you know, that they got to go by. I can't even get these. Can you, can you guys meet on this day? Well, let me check my schedule. Teens should not have schedules like that. They should not have schedules like that. They have to check their schedule, you know, to be able to. Sorry for pointing out, Jada. Um, listen, sports is not everything, guys. It's good to get together, but it's not everything. I feel like the enemies use that to just take our teens a different direction. Used to, they didn't play any sports on Sunday. They gave that day to the Lord. Now practices and meets and all that stuff are on Sunday. Used to, Sundays and Wednesdays, they didn't do it because they knew that was the Lord's day. And since, you know, since God's been taken out of school, and um, that just keeps getting worse and worse and worse. So I think our school does have, they used to have, Martinsville School does have a way that people can come in and um, pray with the teens. I don't know, Shelly, you might know that they can come in and pray with people or the programs. They used to have those kind of programs. So if they do, let's get involved in some of those and reach out. So, all right, close your eyes. Father, we thank you right now for everything that you're doing in this service, Lord, everything that you've did already for the hearts of everyone here, Lord. You know their hearts. You know their lives. You love them so much, Jesus. I thank you for them. I thank you for everyone that's poured into this place with every little ounce of energy that they have or any, any finances that they've poured into it. Bless them abundantly today. Use them. Change them. Shift their lives that it creates an environment for you to work in that people can be reached for you. And we thank you, God. And we glorify you. In Jesus' name, amen. Have a great day. Love you guys. Be careful out in the snow. We prayed for the snow to...